What up, guys? So this is installment number two of, uh, in my opinion, what are the best muscle building exercises. Uh, so if you didn't watch the first one, just kind of go back and check that one out for chest. Um, but just a brief overview of the framework is, uh, you know, and, and I've got a video on this that delves into it deeper on my page as well, too, if you haven't watched it. Um, but I think what makes great uh, hypertrophy exercises, muscle building exercises, are uh, exercises that have great bracing alignments and profile. And, and all that bracing means is, you know, you've got something hard you can push into, um, you know, so that other stuff isn't going to move when you're trying to move and contract the main muscle you're training. Uh, alignment meanings, uh, meaning that the force that you're using aligns well with the fibers you're trying to contract and the joints that that force is also traveling through. Um, and profiles means through whatever range of motion, you know, the given exercise is training, you know, through whatever, uh, whatever muscles you're training, uh, the range of motion they're being trained through as well that the force that you're using externally, so whether it's on the bar or dumbbell or whatever, um, translates into your body and matches the force that your body can produce. Um, and so that's what I mean by profiles. And those are ones that get a little bit more complicated. Again, I've got like a 20 something minute video delving into that topic deeper. So uh, getting into it today is for quads. Uh, what in my opinion are the best uh, exercises um, and this is a tough one for me, so I'm going to go uh, top two, save, I'm going to stick with that theme, um, but then I'm going to give you a close, uh, you know, third and fourth as well too. So again, the idea is, you'll see with these is, again, if I, if I was forced to choose, if I had to choose one, or if I'm personally going to do one with myself or my clients to put as much muscle on my quads as humanly possible, if the exercises I'm going to pick to stick with 90% of the year that's what I'm going to pick. So if there's some reason you don't have this piece of equipment, you can't do it, you know, you're not doing it with a band or the exact variation, it's still fine. You know, you can put on a tremendous amount of muscle still doing similar exercises. This is the idea of what are the absolute best. This is especially the idea of, you know, anyone I think these would put muscles on the fastest, but especially the highest uh, level athletes, the people that are further along in their training career, you really don't have the opportunity to use anything um, but the best exercises. So, you know, you're really trying to... Put, put your body to the limits of what it's capable of doing. You need to exercises that challenge those muscles, uh, you know, to the maximum of what they're capable of doing as well too. And, and volume is precious. You know, you, you gotta make sure that your time in the gym is well spent. Uh, so without further ado, um, my top pick, number one pick, uh, best uh, mass building, muscle building exercise for quads would have to be banded hack squats. Um, and obviously, I will explain that. Um, so. Any squat motion, you know, for, so all these exercises, aside from uh, alignment profiles, bracing, you've seen me say before that I think uh, your body produces uh, the most force and the most bone-to-bone -bone tension in a muscle where muscles are in their mid and lengthened ranges. Uh, so I would make the strong argument you want to prioritize exercises that load those muscles in the mid and lengthened ranges. Um, so it's it was going to be some squat variation for sure because a squat variation done properly loads the quad uh, when it's fully lengthened. Um, all the quads maybe minus the rec fin, but I'm just going to say we're going to talk knee extension to keep things simple. Um, it's going to lo load all the quads in their fully lengthened position well through their mid-range and pretty close to their fully short range. So it's maybe going to miss the last you know 10% of their full contractile range. But an exercise that loads 90% of a muscle's contractile range, especially through the points where it can put the most tension, I think is the most beneficial. So that's why you can make the argument any squat is going to be a pretty good exercise selection because it loads the muscle pretty well through the length and range particularly and then through the mid-range as well. So why a hack squat over a free squat, like a barbell squat or whatever? Um, one is bracing. So again, I still do free squats. You'll see this is going to come up in my number two exercise. So whether it's a barbell squat or a variation, uh, I just can't, I can't get away from the fact that if you have a pad for your hips, for your back, uh, for your upper body um, to press into the whole time, you're just taking out weak links in the chain. I don't know a single human being. I've never met a guy that can squat a significant amount of weight, meaning, you know, four or five plates plus, meaning squatting it properly to depth under control for reps that didn't complain about some sort of back pain, back issue, it fatiguing when they're training, at least at some point in time, not necessarily all the time. So that's the biggest advantage of the hack is you can drive your hips, your back, your upper back into a pad and it's pure output uh, from the quads. So I would just give that, that's the real big one up um, of the hack squat over like a free weight or a free barbell squat is it really takes some weak links uh, of the chain out. And then as far as uh, profiles uh, for any squat, I would just argue 
that bands are going to allow for a better profile, for better bracing, uh, excuse me, for a better profile, um, for better output of what you're capable of doing. Uh, and so again, I've, I've broken into some videos before a little bit talking about um, torque at joints and how torque at your joints is a combination of load and moment arm. You know, moment arm being uh, the distance, the horizontal distance when you're dealing with gravity, uh, but basically the distance of the line of force that you're using, so it's not going to be the line of gravity or the hack force, but the line of force that you're using from the train joint. Um, so basically with any squat, as you drop into the bottom, uh, especially with like a barbell squat, your hips and your knees travel further away from that line of force. So with a hack particularly, your knee travels very far away from that line of force. So meaning at the bottom, that moment arm, that distance from the line of force to the axis is very long. And to, to calculate torque at a joint, you literally have to multiply that distance by whatever load you've gotten on the machine. So when you're at the bottom, it is by far the most torque on your knee joint and the most uh, tension and force has to be produced by your quads. As you come up and that moment arm gets shorter and shorter and shorter, to where if you stood completely straight in a hack, your knee's almost pretty much straight in line with the line of force. If there's literally no moment arm, there's no torque at the joint, doesn't matter how much weight's on there. So all that means is there's the most torque at the joint, the most force has to be produced by your quads at the bottom and the least at the top. So even though the weight is staying the same the whole time, the amount of work your quad is doing the whole time doesn't have to stay the same. So that's where bands come in. Um, whether it's reverse band or band from the bottom, for purposes of this video, I'm gonna say it doesn't really matter. Um, just pick one, the, the differences are marginal, and you just wanna set the bands in a way that it's a very big difference from the top to the bottom. So meaning with a band, you know whether you do it from the top or the bottom, so again, let's use the bottom for the example. As you come up, as soon as that band catches, then the weight that you literally have on the machine gets heavier and heavier and heavier as that band stretches and pulls harder and harder and harder. So the idea is, as that moment arm is dropping off, if there are no, as that moment band drops off, torque would be decreasing um, because, uh, total torque would be decreasing because the weight stays the same. But as you come up with a band, the weight is increasing the whole time, so hopefully making less of a drastic difference in total torque that's, uh, that's occurring at the knee as that moment arm drops off. And if you do the bands from the bottom, it's the same thing. So at the bottom, you would load whatever weight you could tolerate when the bands are assisting, essentially spotting you. And as you come up and the bands let off, so they, they, they're helping less and less, then you're lifting more and more load than you'd have on the total bar. So for example, if you can normally do a hack squat with four plates for X amount of reps, if you band from the bottom with a relatively heavy band, you might be able to do the same amount of reps with three plates and a heavy band. And you're gonna be lifting more weight at the top than you would have just with three weights. And vice versa, if you're going with bands from the top, if you normally be, you know, uh, hack squatting four plates, you could put five plates on here. So when you're at the bottom, you're still lifting four plates of load, relatively speaking. And as you come to the top and the bands completely stop helping at the top, then you're gonna be lifting five plates at the top. So it's gonna put more load at that top half and the complete top of the range of motion than you would be able to without bands. So that is why uh, banded hack squats are my number one pick for a quad exercise, uh, because for bracing alignment profiling, and for that range of motion done properly, uh, a fully lengthened uh, quad is a fully flexed knee, which is when your hamstrings basically smash into your calf. It's when you run out of room because of tissue compression. Um, and then you're coming up to just maybe 90% short of its full contractile range and not locking the knee. But again, I'd argue a fully shortened position is not the best place to grow muscle. Uh, my number two pick is gonna be a safety squat or yoke heel elevated squat. Um, and so for the reason being, and this is one place where if I was really getting picky, you could technically use a heel elevation maybe um, on a hack uh, just for ankle mobility purposes. But for squats, it's actually mechanically different. So one, even if you've got good ankle mobility, the reason you'll see I always use heel elevations when I do squat variations when the goal is targeting is the quad is it will always set the knee further forward, further from the bar path, all other things being the same, which will equate to regardless of what, what weight you have on the bar, that weight further away you know, from the line of force will equate to more torque and more load on the knee. At the same time, the further forward the knee is, the further forward the hips are, the closer the hips will be to the bar path, meaning the less load on the hips, the less load and torque on the hips, excuse me, the less load and torque on all your vertebral column, all the joints of your, uh, your spine. Um, so 
Uh, one, it just allows for motion when you're taking all things into a squat that is more quad dominant, allows you to get to that fully lengthened position. Um, and again, it's just one of those things, if you look at it on paper, you're training your quad through the fully lengthened all the way through its mid range alignment. If, if you can adjust your feet, you can adjust your hip. A lot of things are movable here. So you could actually make the argument it's better for alignment than hacks because you can work around some things that your body can naturally compensate for a little bit that you couldn't necessarily on a hack. Um, and the reason that I go safety squat or yoke bar, I honestly love front squats. It's a very, very close one between these two. Um, but I'm going to give the, the ability for, I'm going to call it bracing, having the safety squat of the yoke bar over your shoulders, being able to keep your things here, uh, your arms down here, takes your shoulders out of it, takes your wrists out of it. It's less to have to hold and stabilize. So it's easier just to get more of that load straight to the quads um, and less of it having to go through your torso, your spine, your shoulders, your wrists, and everything else trying to just hold and manage that bar in place. Um, and then again, so the, the big disadvantage on this one is uh, compared to the hex, not quite as good with bracing, maybe slightly better with alignment, and not as good with the profile. You could absolutely use bands as well too, but I'd like to go with my number two exercise, something that's a little bit easier for people to do, not as much setup, not as much of a pain in the ass, but absolutely I think putting bands on a safety squat or yoke squat um, would also make it a better profile, which would overall make it a better exercises. Um, my next three and four, just for your own information, um, it would be front squats, again, for the same reason, very easy for most people, heel elevated front squats to get to a fully lengthened quad position, very good for alignment, a lot of tension on the knees, uh, th which means, you know, through the knees, which is going to be the quads, less on the back, less on the hips. Um, and my number four would be a leg press, specifically a banded leg press. Um, the disadvantage for leg press is it's really only training most people in the mid range of their quads. So it's just a knot kind of on range of motion. Maybe you're only training your quads mid, you know, 60 or 50% of its contractile range of what it's capable of doing. Um, so just for that reason, not great for picking a single exercise, but amazing from a sheer output standpoint. So from alignment, if you just know what your range of motion and what you can control there, it can be perfect. Bracing is going to be as good as you can get, even better than a hack. Your back is pretty much completely out of it. Um, and especially if you put something like a band on it where you're matching more, which you can uh, do to the top. That's why one of my favorite leg presses ever made. And a lot of people, it's, you know, Cybex, makes, Cybex makes a squat press. Uh, you put a band on top of that, and I think that's the best uh, leg press in the world. Um, and so you can make a strong, strong argument though, although it's a little bit short on full range of motion or, or as much contractile range of motion as you could in one exercise, um, from a sheer load output and, and tension standpoint, what produces the most bone to bone force on the quad, I would have to argue it might be that exercise. Um, so there you go. It's my top two plus three or four um, on top of that. Um, those are the reasons why. And so again, what do you do with this information? I, I think it's again, volume needs to be well spent in the gym. These are the exercises I would build your quad workouts around. So meaning, yes, there's uh, some there's something to be said to rotating exercises, you know, giving maybe wear patterns a break, your body a break, your central nervous system a break. But in the hypertrophy world, you don't have to do it as often as you think. I don't think it's an overestimate to say that you could do these great top two exercises, make them 90% of the year, they're your main output exercises. That same as everything you're trying to get better and better for and better and better execution, and then you're trying to push those loads. So you're pushing up your loads, pushing up what you can tolerate with those while always maintaining or improving execution at the same time. Um, so a couple video clips coming at you here uh, where I'm just gonna give you a couple voiceovers just to give you some form tips and cues and things to think about um, on these exercises so you can get more out of them. Um, and again, hope these help guys and I hope they help you pick some better exercises um, in your workouts and ultimately uh, hopefully help you put on more muscle to where you're trying to put it on. Uh, this series will continue once a week. Give me your feedback below and I hope you guys are liking it. All right, guys, so a couple different ones. Main view I want you to see on this one is two takeaways. One is I want to give you an idea of, you know, kind of how working sets should look, but also what depth uh, should look like. You know, so when it's really saying hamstring covering the calf, it's not right there, that parallel point. It's quite a bit below that to where, again, you're trying to get your hamstring covering your calf. Your knees are fully flexed. Um, big things I want you to see too is my feet. Uh, my feet are in solid contact with the platform the whole time. I often do this barefoot as well too. You don't want your heels coming up. You don't want your feet peeling around. You don't want your arch collapsing. You know, you have nice, good, solid contact. If I'd say through anything, toes spread through the heel and uh, some good contact through the outside of the foot as well too. And you'll see the pace. 
Uh, I, I can't argue, like, why would you not want your negatives to be extremely controlled? And then I'm contracting as hard and as fast as I can on the way up. The weight just gets so heavy at the top, um, and you can't see here the bands are from the top. So if you look very carefully, I have bands reversed from the top, deloading just the bottom, um, and not touching it all for the top half. So if you do this properly, your last rep should look about like this one, where you pretty much hit a wall, and your spotter kind of has to yank you through, ideally at the same or slowest pace that you can to finish. Um, and this one I wanted you guys to really see my feet. So again, I like I said, I like to go barefoot. It keeps my feet from peeling around on the pad at all. I can keep nice, solid contact through the heel outside of my foot. Arch isn't coming up, still getting to that point of nicely covering the calf, trying to control the pace as much as I can. Um, and again, I, I've got the bands. You can see it's, there's no science to getting bands on there. They're kind of uh, jerry-rigged on there. You can see they're, they're catching on the bottom half. And you can't see it too well from here, but they're they're completely not touching for maybe the top six inches of the range of motion. So they're helping quite a bit at the bottom, uh, pretty much off by the midpoint and doing nothing for the top half of the range of motion. And that's a really good profile here. Um, and last one I want to show you here again was just with the, the takeaway on this one um, is effort. Um, and, and a little bit too on stance. You can see it on the last one. You can see it on this one. Ideally, you want the feet as low as you can on the platform without your heels coming up off of the pad. Take whatever width you need that you feel allows your hips to move a little bit easier. Sometimes people go very narrow width, thinking it's going to help their quads more. But because their width of their stance is so narrow, they actually run out of range of motion at the hip before they get to a fully flexed knee. So I would argue make a wider stance more times than not. Uh, toes turn slightly out, so you're, you know, your hips are going to be um, a little bit wider apart, a little externally rotated, a little, uh, a little bit uh, abducted. Um, and again, for the whole reason of you just care about where your knee goes, yes, of course your glutes are working on this, adductors are working, and hams as well too a bit. Um, but you, you want to be mostly concerned with your knees getting where you want your knees to get. Um, and again, done properly with a good spotter. You really want to utilize those bands. It should be ridiculously slow and painful as you're coming to the top. Next pick, as I said before, is the uh, safety squat bar with the heel elevated. Again, I always like barefoot. It gives me good broad contact with the floor, uh, with my feet, my toes. Um, and again, I want to initiate with knees moving. So knees driving forward first. And again, look at the hamstring covering the calf. If you actually want to pause at the bottom, you're going to the depth where your hamstring is covering the calf. And I honestly wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have the heel elevation. I wouldn't be able to get my knee far enough forward. My hips would run out of range of motion first. Um, so again, I'm pushing my knees. You'll see my back and spine stay nice and straight. My hips don't pull out of place. And again, I'm going as controlled of a pace as I can. Um, and again, I want to show you guys some working sets as well too. So the idea of, yes, I want really good form, uh, but with heavy loads. And for me, that's kind of what that balance translates to being. You know, again, controlled negatives, not not overly slow, You know, not really trying to have unnecessary pauses anywhere to make things horrible. Um, and I want to give you one more here. Uh, Hunter really does a good job of demoing this too, so sneaking some footage in of him as well too. And showing you the control that can be done with some pretty damn heavy weight. You can see how far forward he gets his knees on this one. Um, again, using elevation, driving those knees forward, and just going for a nice uh, controlled negatives. And again, a good spotter can help when the profile is not perfect. So if you might not be able to get out of the bottom on his own, I can give him that little extra spot out of there and let him grind through the top all by himself. Then the bonus footage. Uh, you'll see the mechanics between front squats and safety squats are very similar. Um, however the hell you want to hold the bar. So this is why it's, it's, this is pretty much almost the same exercise in my opinion. The only semantics is how you hold the bar. I honestly don't mind holding the bar at all. Um, so these exercises are pretty interchangeable for me, and I'm pretty comparable on what kind of loads I can use, maybe a little bit heavier on safety squats. Uh, but I'm driving the knees forward. You can see my stances to allow my hips to move. So widest stance, toes pointed slightly out, driving those knees forward, not letting my back move or my hips pull out of place. Um, and again, if you can do it, I, I like that grip because I've always done it that way since I was 15. You can do the arms crossed, of course. And I'm sure you've seen, too, where people use straps to hold the bar in place as well, too. And then the last bonus footage uh, is just a couple of people doing some leg press. Uh, and again, the whole point that I put these in here is just so you can see what I mean by the range of motion. If you look just at the knee, you know, we're not taking it to full lockout because there's no tension there, essentially. Um, and if you look, we're not getting anywhere remotely near. We're probably missing, again, like I said, a good 40, 50 degrees um, of range of motion that knee has. But it's all right. You know, if you can't see the Cybex squat press, um, it gets heavier at the top already. We've got a big ass band strapped around the bottom. Um, so it's really, really good just for work. Um, you know, just kind of getting you in that mid range and putting absolutely as much weight as you possibly can on. Um, and again, I consider my range of motion. That's as much as I can do without my hips moving. Hunter's another good example. 
Um, but again, the range of motion just doesn't look amazing. He's got his feet as low as he can on that platform as well, too. That helps eliminate uh, as much range of motion as you can at the hip and get more at the knees. But it's still just not you know a drastic range of motion. But for a sheer load standpoint and the most tension you can get on your quads, still a great, great option. And something you could absolutely include in your workouts. Uh, it doesn't have to be the bread and butter of those other ones. Uh, but really, really good for that mid-range as well, too. Um, and again, I make the argument, even though some people think that range is a little short, um, it's not. I mean, the hips just run out. Uh, and obviously, if I can speak to my quads, and Hunter's quads are pretty decent, too, it seems to be working all right. So hope that helps, guys. Uh, and if you haven't already, please check out my site, hypertrophycoach.com. Uh, this is what every single workout on there uploaded is like. Uh, full workouts, giving this kind of cueing and execution and tips and all that kind of stuff the whole way through the workouts. Uh, as far as, you know, uh, the workouts are built around concepts like this, uh, designed around this exercise selection, around these same types of things. So hopefully giving you as much thought process um, behind your workouts as possible and helping you get the most out of them. Uh, and again, leave comments below, and I hope these videos are very helpful, guys.